Okay, good morning. Can you hear me? Can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. okay thank you. Uh, okay, so to, it's already 803. Uh, we only have around 20 plus students now. So, okay, I'll just start my lecture. Okay, so I think some of you are having more. Okay, so it's okay. Uh, we just start. Uh, okay, so today I will be covering uh, on the continuation of uh, last week's chapter. Okay, initially, I wanted to give in an ad puzzle video, but nothing much to cover. Okay, so today I will cover the remaining of chapter 8. Okay, and I also will cover chapter 9 on hydraulic actuators. Okay, so directional control valve in hydraulics. Okay, so we have around here in the content, here is about 6 directional control valves that we will discuss. Okay, so the construction of directional control valve is almost similar, almost similar to in pneumatic. Okay, even the symbols are almost similar. So I think you will understand better. Okay, so some uh, description on the directional control valve. Okay, a directional control valve is a component which starts, stops, or changes the direction of the flow pipe within a circuit. Okay, so we know directional control valve, the function of directional control valve is to control the direction of the flow. Okay, so in hydraulics, uh, is uh, the hydraulic oil. Okay, so... Okay, so if a valve's actuator is detended, detended meaning, so you have stages in the valve. So it will remain in the last position to which it was shifted until the detent is released. Okay, normally we, are, we will have um, detent switch. Okay, so switch with a various level. Okay, maybe speed one, speed two, speed three. So you press one, it will lock at speed one. So it will be remain locked even you take out your hand. Okay, so that is what we call as a detended. So if you want more, so you press more, it will lock in the second position and you will have a release mechanism. Okay, so that's what we call as a detended. Okay, so the moving parts inside the valve divert flow through internal passages within the valve housing. Okay, so we know how the valve works. Okay, when you press, uh, one pot will open, one more will close. So that's how uh, the valve directs the flow using the internal passages. Passages meaning uh, laluan. Okay, so you have uh, some part for the uh, flow to pass through. Okay, so a, a valve's normal position may be referred to as normally open or normally closed. Okay, so as we all know, in pneumatics, so normally open means uh, flow is allowed, uh, meaning there's a connection. Okay, normally open. So normally I will remember it as eh? normally on. Okay, O, O, open. So I will change it to on. Okay, so normally closed means no connection. Okay, so this is in the pneumatic. The pneumatic and also hydraulic. Okay, so example of four to three way and lever valve with shut off position. Okay, so this is the symbol. Okay, so four over three. So you have uh, four ports and three uh, boxes, the so three positions. Okay, so here you have a uh, port P, A, B, and T. So P is stands for pressure and T is for tank. So working port A and B. So meaning you have four ports. Okay, so normally you will have four ports. Okay, so two over two, we will see two over two directional control valve. So this is the symbol. So two over two, we'll have uh, two ports. Okay, so two ports and two boxes, two positions. 
Okay. So figure below illustrate a normally close to O2. So normally close in hydraulics, meaning no connection. Okay, so normally it will be without connection. And if you press, it will shift to the left hand side and you will have a connection. Okay, so normally close meaning unactuated position. The spring three. Okay, so you have, uh, you, this is the construction. So you have number one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so number one is the housing. Okay, so number two is the full assembly. Okay. okay uh, number three is the return spring. Number four is all the seals. So we have uh, seals to cover unwanted uh, release. Okay, and number five is the push button. Okay, so from here you can see. So the normally closed or unactuated position. So it will be here. So once you press this, this uh, spool will move and there will be connection. So initially, no connection. So normally the connection will be between port A. Okay, if two over two, only one port working port. So here, no connection. So it's already blocked. Okay. So initial position. So this is what we call as the initial position. So P block. If the pressure line is blocked, so no connection, no fluid flow. Okay, so uh, so this is when the valve is actuated. Okay, so you press the button, you press the button, the spool will move inside, and there will be connection between port P and port A. Okay, so L is the uh, Passage permit flow that leaks past the spool to drain out of the spool housing. So what they say is, so uh, in hydraulic, so you, we know we cannot release the extra oil to the environment. So you have L, K okay, L, uh, for the extra oil to be passed back to the tank. Okay, so actuator position. So this is the actuator position where pressure port P is connected to working port A. Okay, so this is for two over two direction control valve. Okay, so three over two direction control valve. We have three port. Okay, port one, port two, port three. So we have three port and two position. So that's why we call it as three over two. Okay, so it's uh, similar to 2 over 2. It differs it that uh, it provides an additional function. Uh, so if you can see here, it shows this is the initial position. So you have, compared to the previous one, you have P, A, and T. Okay, here you have a special port for you to send it back to the tank. So initially, uh, earlier, it was L. Uh, it's just a small passage which is not declared. Here you have uh, three ports by itself. Okay, because uh, this is three over two. Okay, so the three over two way valve allows you to return to tank through the third port. Uh, so you have a third port, especially for and uh, so figure illustrate a normally closed 3 over 2 direction wall. Uh, so this is an initial position. Port P is blocked. A is open to 10. Okay, so meaning the hydraulic oil comes here and it will be blocked. And your port A is connected to the tank. So meaning all the hydraulic oil from port A will be channeled back to the tank. So this is an initial position, the unactuated position. Okay, so the port P source of pressure is blocked and the fluid from the system port A can flow back to the tank. Uh, so this is for this. So there's a return spring 3 and the uh, internal friction on the seals holds the spool in. 
position. Okay, so you have a seal here and the return spring. So this is what makes the push button to be in this position. So meaning uh, the force from the spring pushes it here. Okay, for the actuator position, so if you press the push button, so the spool will move to the left and port P will be connected to A and A to T will be disconnected. Okay, so this is the actuator position of normally open. Okay, so P is open to A and T is blocked. Okay, so 4 over 2 way directional control valve. So 4 over 2 way uh, valve normally will have like this X symbol. Okay, so we know. So we will have uh, 4 ports and 2 position. And it's connected uh, on the right hand side. Is it disconnected? And on the left hand side, there's a connection. Okay, so 4 over 2 way direction control valve is different from a 3 over 2 way direction control valve and 2 over 2 way uh, that is like the ability to block a port. Uh, so you can see here you have four, 4 ports. So you have uh, T, A, P, and B. So you have two working ports A and B, the pressure, pressure port, and also tank. Okay, so, so from here you know uh, there's a flexibility, so you can choose between A and B. Okay, other function number. Okay, so fluid can flow to either working port A or B depending on spool position. So depending on this position, so you can choose. Uh, so port A connected to some connection, port B connected to some connection. You can choose uh, which we, where you want it to be. Uh, so the you to kind, so it will go to the respective port. Uh, so kalau you to kind, that is number. But kalau you to kind any. So for now, your P is connected to B. Okay. So if you press this, yani uh, dia akan bergerak ke sini. So P will be connected to A. Okay. So it will be like that. Okay, so initial position, P flows to B and A port is open to 10. Uh, so this is A, port A is connected to 10. Okay, so if you push this, P will be connected to A and B will be connected to 10. Uh, they can lalu, lalu and katas, connected to 10. Okay, from port B. When push button 5 is pressed, the reset spring is compressed and the spool to shift. Kalau you tekan, so spring compressed, so your spool will move to um, the left. This allows fluid under pressure to flow from A, P to A. And dia kena buka laluan baru, P to A. So return fluid can, can flow from port B back to tank, port B to tank. So actuator position P flows to A and port B drains to tank. Okay, so that's how 4 over 2 way direction control valve works. Okay, and 4 over 3 direction control valve close center. Uh, so close center, maksudnya tengah-tengah tu no connection. So all the ports are disconnected. Uh, then 4 over 3. Uh, so you have two sides that you can you choose. Hmm. So kalau sebelah sini, uh, P connected to A. Okay, P connected to A and B connected to uh, tank. Uh, kalau you go for arrow ni. And if you choose the right hand side, so P connected to B, A connected to D. Uh, so you can choose either, either one. Okay, in the center position, so all the ports are blocked. So whether the cylinder is extending or retracting, when the valve is switched to the center position, the fluid on the piston side and rod side will be trapped. Uh, kalau ke center, do flow. 
fluid will be blown. Okay, the cylinder will stop accurately in this stroke. Okay, so any color center, they can stop the car much any. So no no direction. So disadvantage, so pressure, a pressure relief valve must divert full system flow back to the tank. This undesirable since the friction in the valve produces heat and energy is lost. Uh, so color the case tengah tengah ni no connection. Meaning all the oil available must be released back to the tank, yeah, and it will create some uh, heat because of friction and energy is lost. Okay, that's what they are they are saying lah. Okay, so if in the middle position, so it will be at this side because all the oil will be drained. Okay, so if connected. Uh, you press the end lever, so it will choose the left hand side. Uh, pressure can also it will push the cylinder to extend, and the oil from this side will be moved to the tank. Uh, so if you choose the right hand side, uh, so it will uh, hydraulic oil will enter, go to pot B, so cylinder will be retracting. Oil from here will be channeled back to the tank. Okay, so just uh, one disadvantage, uh, friction. Friction generally eat and energy is lost and it can start fire. Okay, so that's on the closed center. Okay, tandem center. Recirculation in the center position. Uh, the other one shiny. Okay, so much a muka. Okay, so it's like a face. Okay. Here, port A and B uh, initially is not connected, and the pressure will be connected to the tank. Okay, until you give some input, but you do choose. Okay, so recirculation in the center position, recirculation, so pressure always will be connected to tank. Okay, so uh, it will have an advantage. Lah. This valve will control the position of the cylinder exactly as the closed center valve does by blocking the port A and B. Okay, so uh, control the position sama macam tadi. Okay, since P returned to the tank, the fluid is not passed through a pressure relief valve. Uh, as a valve well, here from beginning is already connected to the tank, so you no need to force it go through the pressure relief valve. So meaning, and uh, you it won't face uh, friction, lah. It won't face friction, so no energy loss. Okay, so the advantage of uh, tandem centered direction control valve advantage is greatly reduces energy loss in the system. So energy study loss because of friction. Yeah. So to you reduce it by connecting it to the pressure, uh, to the tank. So that's one advantage. Lah. Okay. If you can see here, mid position. Okay, so this is what we call as a detended. The other one lock. So you can lock uh, to various, which are the at the bigger position. Young, you really lock. Three different speed or uh, three di uh, different position. Okay, so this this is the mid position we discuss first. Mid position, you can see the direction of the pressure is connected to the tank. Uh, A and B is disconnected. Okay, and position A, pressure flows to A. Uh, so you take any you lock the first position. Okay, so this is the mid position. Okay, so this is the uh, left position, and this is the right position. This are the trigger position depending. Okay, uh, so position A, so pressure is connected to A, and B is connected to tank. Kalau you tengok, erroneous. 
Okay, and position B, pressure is connected to pot B, uh, A is connected to N. Okay, so normally uh, either one will be connected to tank. Uh, so energy are lost la, because uh, there is always a flow back to the tank. Okay, so that's the advantage of tandem center. Okay, and the open center. Okay, the third one. Okay, when this valve is in the mid position, system flow will return to tank. Flow and under pressure also will be released back to tank. Uh, and even the other advantage is maybe. Okay, so you mention about the each. So the excessive oil always will be back to the tank. Always connected. If an external force is applied on the piston rod, the fluid remaining on either side of the piston will also return to tank. Mm. So you can connect. So you, whether you choose position A or position B, somehow all the connection uh, will back to tank. Okay, so when it happens like that, it will re reduce the pressure. Okay. Uh, so, fluid under pressure will be released back to the tank. So, system view tadi pressure sangat. Uh, when no pressure, no energy loss, and uh, no heat generated. So, that's what you need to understand. The advantage of this valve allows cylinder to be positioned for mission adjustment. Uh, this is one of the advantage. Lah. Because uh, you, since the system is not under pressure, uh, so you would avoid adjustment to the machine. Um, so this is on the mechanical uh, repairs or whatever. Lah. Okay. So assuming that the system pressure remains very low, any pressure present between the valve and the cylinder will be relieved back to tank. So maintenance will avoid so about system is always maintain the pressure very low. So dia kalau you tersilap, buka or what, so you still can control the flip. Okay, so that's what um, give you, um, allows the machine adjustment. Okay, so reviewing on the valve symbol. Okay, so you can see from the symbol, you can name it. Uh, see, I need a popular question lah. Okay, so normally I will give one symbol, ask you to name it, or I give you the name, asking asking you to draw. Yeah, so normally one one symbol, one mark. Ah, so kalau saya bagi tiga symbol, so you dapat tiga mark. So it is quite important how you want to draw it. Okay, kita kita faham lah based on the name. So two over two directional control valve meaning uh, two port. And two position, dua, dua kotak, so direction control valve, okay, lever actuated, uh, so lever maksudnya tu astangan, okay, so you push or pull, okay, so you have this, so spring offset, okay, so you have spring, detended, uh, detended macam ni ada lock, so few position you boleh lock, and normally close, so normally close meaning no connection. Yes, but normally no connection. Okay, so this is 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 direction control valve. Lever actuated. Spring offset. Detended. Normally closed. Okay, so 4 over 2 direction control valve. Lever actuated. Spring offset. Detended. detended. Oh, if you want to write normally closed, pun boleh. Okay, so 4 over 3, direction control valve. Okay, close center. So, tengah-tengah no connection. So, lever actuated and detended. Okay, so 4 over 3, direction control valve. Tandem center. Okay, lever actuated, detended. Yeah, I think quite easy juga lah kalau you nani. Okay, so it's just based on the 
input. Okay, so for our three direction control valve, open center. So you just need to remember this. So yani close center, yani tandem, center. I am open center. So all the names you need to remember. Okay, so lever actuator, lever, it can be pull type or push type. The other I do a do a type. Okay, so you need you pull outward. So this is you push inward. Okay, so it can be tapi tapalu lah. So you just can say lever actuated. So we understand. Okay, and dependent. So detended, uh, you draw based on how many detents available. Kalau tiga, tiga lah. Uh, macam yang ni, dia ada tiga position. So you draw three. Uh, so tadi, uh, ni ada dua position. So you draw two. Okay. So jangan dekat sini, you lukis tiga. Yeah. Macam tiga celongkang tu kan. Uh, so lukis dua. So depends on the position. So this is three. So here, don't draw only two, uh, minus mark. Okay. So, any questions so far? Okay, so I think we have covered chapter 8, part 2. That is all, eh? If you have question, please ask. No question, sir. Okay. So, uh, we will take 5. Then we will return back uh, with chapter 9. Okay, so now 8.29, so we will come back at 8.35.
Okay, we are back. Are you back? Can we start? Did I Yes, sir. Okay, so we will start with chapter 9. So it's a short, a short chapter. Okay, so I think hydraulic actuators uh, you are familiar with. Okay, so you, uh, you have done the lab. Okay, so hydraulic drive section. Okay, what is hydraulic drive section? So drive section or the actuator. Okay, of a hydraulic system is the part of the system which executes the various working movement of a machine or manufacturing system. Okay, so whatever things that execute the working movement. Uh, so it can be a linear movement or rotary movement. Okay, so we use cylinder like kita gunakan. We will use a cylinder or we will have a motor. Okay, so that's what we call it as a drive section. The energy contained in the hydraulic fluid is used for the execution of movements or the generation of forces. So the hydraulic uh, fluid contains the energy, the hydraulic energy. So we use that for the movement, to start the movement, okay, or gen generate the forces, uh, which are clamping. So when you supply hydraulic, uh, hydraulic oil to the a cylinder and uh, they can start clamping process so, so that's how a drive section works uh, thus hydraulic actuators are devices used to convert pressure energy of the fluid into mechanical energy so hydraulic actuators digunakan hydraulic pressure energy so be specific so hydraulic pressure energy of the fluid uh, and convert it into Mechanical energy. Mechanical energy, it can be anything related to mechanical, so anything related to movement. Okay, so that's what we call as a mechanical. The mechanical energy also uh, can be the potential energy. So it can be kinetic energy or potential energy. Okay, so in between, kita ada, we have uh, heat. Okay, heat is generated. Okay, heat is energy. Uh, so you can have a sub energies in between okay so this is achieved using the following components so if you are using a linear actuators okay uh, or we call it as hydraulic cylinders uh, so we use that for linear actuation okay or linear movement okay meaning from the right to left left to right and down to up up to down okay so that's what we call it as a linear movement so rotary actuators we have Okay, so we always call it as uh, hydraulic motors. Okay, this is for the rotary movement. Okay, so drilling, boring, so all that uh, we, we call it as a, a rotary actuation. Okay, and we have one more, semi-rotary actuators. Okay, so semi-rotary, so it's a similar like uh, uh, drilling or whatever application but just for semi-rotary you have a limited angle of actuator actuation okay, it can be 90 degrees movement okay so 90 degree rotation or 180 degree rotation or 270 degree rotation okay so that's how a semi-rotary actuator works Okay, yeah, so you can see the hydraulic drive section. Okay, previously we have seen about power section, power supply section. Okay, then we have a power control section where all your valve will be. And today we will discuss on the drive section. Okay, where the actual works are done physically. Okay, so hydraulic cylinders. The hydraulic cylinder is a device which converts fluid power into linear mechanical force or end motion. Okay. Fluid power meaning hydraulic power. Okay. It usually consists of a movable elements, a piston and a piston rod 
operating within the cylindrical ball. Okay, so you have a ball here, and you have a piston, and also you have a, uh, a rod. Okay, so when you supply uh, the fuel power, uh, so it will either extend or retract. That's how hydraulic cylinders work. Okay, so parts of hydraulic cylinders. Okay, so we have seen this in pneumatic. So in hydraulic also almost the same. Just the, the construction inside will be more suited for hydraulic application. Okay, or hydraulic oil. Okay, so it normally will consist of a cylinder barrel, the main body. Then you have a, a aid and also base cap. And, or we call it as a base end cap and bearing end cap or the eight end cap. Okay, so two sides and the green color. Okay, then we have a mainly piston. Here the one that covers both sides, both uh, red end. Okay, and you have a rod okay, in, be in between. Then you also have a bush. Bush, uh, bush is uh, for uh, smoothen the movement. Okay, or the to cover. Then you have seals. Uh, we have various seal seals. The function is to make sure no leakage. Okay, then you have a inlet port. Uh, if it's a double acting cylinder. You have uh, both ports. Uh, you can use it as an inlet port. Okay, so if one is inlet, one more is outlet. So if pressure is entering here, this will be the outlet. Uh, so you can switch. Okay, so that's uh, basically the, the the functions. Okay, or the parts of the cylinder. So it's quite famous as a piston. Normally, uh, we will give and ask you to label what are the parts. Okay, so type of hydraulic cylinder. Okay, so type of hydraulic cylinder. Uh, so we are, I think we are familiar with this single acting cylinders, and double acting cylinders, so telescopic cylinder and tandem cylinder. So similar like uh, how we have studied in pneumatic. Okay, so single acting cylinder, normally you have only one port and uh, you have spring. In double acting cylinder, you have uh, two working ports. Uh, you need to control it and in order to extend or destroy. So telescopic cylinders, uh, normally it's like a telescope. So uh, you have to various parts. One will lead for other parts to extend. Okay, and tandem cylinders. So normally, uh, a normal cylinder with two parts inside, uh, it will produce more force. Okay, so these are some of the cylinders that are available in hydraulics. You will see one by one. A single acting cylinder consists of a piston inside uh, a cylindrical housing called barrel. Okay, on one end is attached the rod, which is a reciprocate. So reciprocate meaning it move in and up. Here on the opposite end, there's a port for the entrance and exit of the hydraulic oil. Okay, so normally we will have one port. Okay, one port for it to extend. The return will be based on the spring. They produce force only in one direction by hydraulic pressure acting on the piston. I mean, only one side you produce hydraulic pressure. Okay, the return is done by the spring. So, or we call it a mechanical. Uh, so, automatically, and no more hydraulic pressure, uh, spring will extend. Okay, so it can be based on the mechanical, or it also can be based on gravity. So, you, if you, your cylinder utilize um, gravity, so because gravity is always available on the Earth's surface, Bole Juga Gunakan gravity, so you can use this. Okay, so that's, but the idea is only one side you give uh, hydraulic pressure, and one more side it happens by itself. Okay.
Okay, so I think you have seen this uh, picture before, okay, in pneumatic. Okay, so you have a piston and you have a rod, you have a spring. Okay, so when you give pressure, your cylinder will extend. Okay, when you don't supply anything, uh, your spring will overpower and it will push back the piston to the original position. Okay, so single acting cylinder. So we move to the double acting cylinder. So there are two types of double acting cylinder. So one with only a rod in one side, and one more is both sides. So this also we have discussed before. Okay, so this is what we call as a double acting cylinder with a piston rod on one side. So only one side you can see the piston move in and out. Okay. So similar like earlier, so you supply, it will extend, then it will retract. Uh, meaning uh, only one side you have rod, so the other side is uh, you don't have anything. Okay. And this is the double acting cylinder with piston rod on both sides. Okay, so you have a working pot. So you have a piston. So you can utilize both sides. Uh, if your application requires the uh, uh, cylinder like this, so you can use both sides at the piston, the rod. Okay, so when you supply here, so this will move to the uh, right hand side, and uh, the right hand side rod will extend. If you supply hydraulic oil on the right hand side so your piston will move to the left and the left rod will extend and this side will retract okay so that's how you can use a double acting cylinder with piston on both sides okay so then we have a telescopic cylinder it's a very interesting uh, cylinder because it can extend uh, so one advantage of telescopic cylinder is it requires very small space for you to keep in a retractor position and it can extend uh, to a very large or very length, lengthy extension. Okay. So it's very useful. The so telescopic cylinder is used when a long stroke length and a short retracted length are required. So retracted kerchief is small uh, and extended is a large long stroke. Okay. So the telescopic cylinder extends in stages. Each stage consists of a sleeve that fits inside the previous stage. Um, so they are the Tiga stage. Okay, so either stage one extend the loop, then uh, we'll pull stage 2 and stage 3 or the other way around okay so it depends on the uh, type of cylinder uh, telescopic cylinder okay, some stage 1 extend the loop okay, some stage 3 extend first and followed by the other stage so it depends okay so most telescopic cylinders are uh, single acting Okay, so normally it can be a single acting. Okay, so it just like extend. Okay, um, but uh, it's also available as a double because we can also utilize it uh, by supplying at the other end. A double acting telescopic cylinder must be specially designed and manufactured. Okay, so it's not always available in the market and you need to specially design for your application. So when you specially design, it will be more expensive uh, and it will be more expensive because of the complex cons construction. So you need to fit a sleeve, okay, so the sleeve uh, so that it can pull the other stages. So more things involved and more complex. Susan and Boyd. Okay, so like the expensive. Okay, so when the cylinder extends, all the sections move together until the outer section is 
prevented from further extension by its problem. Uh, selalunya dia ada macam one lock. Okay. Uh, so it will extend first. All will extend until the outer one. Okay. So it can be this. Okay. As I said, uh, maybe the orange part will move first fully. Then it will pull the purple and also yellow. Or the yellow will move first. Then purple. Then orange. Okay. So it can be either way. Okay, the remaining section continue of stroking until the second outmost section reach the limit of its stroke. This process continues until all sections are extended. The innermost one being the last of all. Okay, so in this case, uh, the or orange one will extend first. Okay, so it depends. Okay, normally it will have like two stages or three stages. The maximum normally will be three stages. If not, it will be too long. Okay, so normally we will see this in a dumb truck bed. Yeah, a lorry sampa atau normal lorries where you can elevate, uh, you can raise, raise the dumb truck bed. Yeah, so when it extend uh, so pasir ke apa dia akan jatuh okay so this the uh, application that we always will see yeah, at the construction site ataupun at the garbage dump uh, site so anywhere okay lori sampah pun gunakan the same thing okay so uh, garbage truck Okay, so this is one of the uh, typical application. Then we have a tandem cylinder. Okay, tandem cylinder, so as we know, the size of the cylinder will be the same. Nampapo macham the normal double acting cylinder. It looks like a normal double acting cylinder. Just in inside, if you have another wall. Okay, so another wall. And you have two... Uh, you have actually four ports, okay, two for each chamber. So you have a chamber, two chamber. So first chamber and second chamber, and you have two pistons in one piston in each chamber, okay. And the rod is connected. Okay, when you supply uh, pressure uh, for it to extend, you supply the port knee and also port knee. So two ports you supply. The pressure and because of the larger uh, area of exposure, uh, so the casini at the two piston, the casini at the four piston, so the area will be double uh, and the force will be double as well. Okay. Uh, sorry, it says here. So pressure is applied in both pistons, resulting in increased force because of the larger area. So larger area of piston. The both side you supply. So the drawback is that this cylinder must be longer than a standard cylinder to achieve an equal speed because flow must go to both piston. Here's the flow you divide into two. Okay, so you divide into two and the length size. Uh, walaupun the cylinder is this long, but this piston only can until, extend until here. And this piston only can extend until here. Uh, so there's a limitation of space for the piston to move. So if you want it to achieve a equal speed like the normal double acting cylinder, uh, so you need to increase this length. And maybe double this length. So you have a double force and at the normal speed. The normal speed. So that's what they said here. Okay, so graphical symbols. Okay, so these are the graphical symbols for the cylinders. Okay, kalau saya bagi symbol ni, you must know how to uh, give the name. Oh, if I give the name, you must know how to draw the symbols. Okay, so that's what uh, is very important. Yes, yeah, so I always say, 
try during the lab class. I will give example. So try. So that you will get familiarized how to find the components. While you're finding the compo components, you will learn the names. Okay, that's what uh, I always will suggest. Okay, so like here, so it's a single acting because only one uh, line. Okay, been unspecified written. Uh, you don't know. So normally it will have a spring written, but if it's open like this, so you don't know how it written. Okay, so it's an unspecified written. Okay, and single acting. So this is the normal one that you always see with the spring. Okay, so this is a double acting. How you know double acting? Because you have two lines. Okay. And uh, this is a double acting with uh, rods uh, in both sides. Okay, so telescopic cylinder, the, uh, this is a double acting cylinder because you have two lines. Okay, so this is a telescopic cylinder, single acting. So you can have a single acting also. The return may be based on gravity. Okay, if no spin. Okay, normally uh, the single acting telescopic cylinder says it will be based on gravity. Okay, so you remove the hydraulic oil from the cylinder, automatically it will retract based on gravity. Okay, and uh, double acting cylinder, fixed cushion on one side. Okay, fixed cushion, so meaning when it returns, yeah, it will have some cushioning. So this is a variable cushion on one side. Okay, so it's only one side. You think of uh, how it is constructed. If the box is in the middle, so you have both sides. Uh, so you, even in return, it will have cushioning. Uh, extend also, you will have cushioning if you draw at the center. And it's variable, so by the line. Okay, so that's, that's how you normally will uh, give names. Okay, so any questions so far? So far, believe I am, that's all then. Uh, so, we are not ready. Yeah, that's it. Any? Um, go for it one. Huh? Sebab tadi ada dua simbol macam sama. Ah, yang double acting cylinder variable cushion on one side dengan both side. Apa dia beza dia? Okay, beza dia. Yang ni dekat tengah tengah. Kalau you tengok betul betul, yang ni dekat tepi. Nampak tak? Oh, okay, nampak nampak. Ah, uh, so if you so, letak dekat tengah-tengah, dia akan, when it retract and extend pun, dua-dua side ada cushioning. Cuba bayangkan yang ni macam satu sponge. Ha, dia extend dengan retract pun, dia ada cushioning. Ha, yang ni, only when it retract back, dia ada cushioning. Extend, no cushioning. Hmm, okay, sir. Okay. okay, so ada soalan lain. So, ni ada question. The question. Okay, so we will move to hydraulic motors. Uh, hydraulic motor transform hydraulic energy into mechanical energy, which is applied to a resistance object by means of a shaft connected with the motor. Okay, so you can see here the image. So when you supply hydraulic oil, it will start to rotate. Okay, so there's a shaft. Uh, shaft normally will rotate. Okay, so in hydraulic motor, the rotating elements, in example, wings, gear, pistons, are pushed by oil pressure to enable the motor shaft to rotate and thus develop a necessary turning torque and continuous rotational motion. Okay, so uh, we know that the hydraulic pressure uh, applied to the hydraulic motor and it will start the shaft to rotate and it will create a torque. When it rotates, it will create a torque and it will be continuous rotational motion. Okay. 
okay so rotational motion okay so this is a hydraulic motor okay so you have a gear okay, when you supply the hydraulic oil uh, the gear will rotate so if one side normally will determine the other side so if we rotate uh, to the uh, uh, normally we will follow clockwise or anti-clockwise okay so if this is clockwise uh, this will be anti-clockwise and it will create a rotation okay and this is the symbol of hydraulic motor so hydraulic as i say uh, it will be darkened uh, they can be tampen. so we know this is hydraulic if pneumatic uh, no not darkened okay so the much want to put it okay so this is a hydraulic motor with gear a motor with two direction rotation uh, so you can determine uh, both direction okay so this is what we call as a semi or limited rotary motors the limited angle rotary actuator is applied when the shaft has a rot rotate over a limited angle uh, meaning when you supply hydraulic oil so it will rotate until it reaches here so you have a wind to con to stop you are the stopper okay so uh, in the figure so this is 270 degrees so you start from here until here so if you want it to rotate back so you supply oil in the other side okay so this is 270 but you also can have 180 degrees or 90 degrees it depends so you just need to have more space in, in between they much other block more more chambers okay, so you can control Okay, so this type of actuator is among others used as a rotor actuator on small cranes and excavators. Uh, selalunya kita gunakan dalam crane or excavators. So that's why you see the excavator and board construction. So it can turn a limited angle uh, to the right or to the left, up or down. So it's limited. Uh, so normally we will use this in a uh, mobile uh, mobile hydraulics mobile hydraulics even the stationary hydraulics also you can use so it depends on your application okay so for end of slide so any question okay so we have covered chapter 9 it's only 20 slides and mostly we already know so, if you have any question, please ask. Uh, so, sir. Yes. The semi limited rotary motor is like when you explain about excavator, it's like the claw able to move up and down, right? Yes. Claws or even the direction. Direction yes. of the rotation of the excavator is all limited. And why do they use um, hydraulics then? Why do they have to use uh, hydraulic instead of pneumatic? Uh, what do you mean by pneumatic gear? In the excavator? Yeah, yeah. In the excavator, we are using hydraulics fully. We don't have a pneumatic. Yeah. So pneumatic cannot produce a large force. It's only up to 10 bar. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, so if you want to increase uh, more angles, uh, so you increase the degree of freedom. Uh, so you make sure that, so if you see the excavator, the main body can rotate fully at uh, 360 degrees. Uh, only the, the arm uh, or the dripper, so it, can, it will have a limited angle. So when you, your your main body can rotate, uh, so that's why you can see sometimes the excavator will face in front, sometimes at the side, sometimes at the back. So it gives a more flexibility. So that's how we increase the degree of freedom, mm -hmm. so that you can operate in multiple angles. 
Okay, so even though it has a 270 degrees uh, rotational limit. Okay, so any other question? Okay, so if no question, so I think we concluded the two chapters. We only have uh, one more part to go, chapter 10. Okay, so we will cover next week. Okay, so tomorrow we will have lab. Okay, so lab uh, in the morning for the other group, group two. Okay, so you can join for the lab four class. Okay, so you are required to complete lab four. So lab module already uploaded. So next week, if you want to demo and get demo marks, you may demo next week. Uh, uh, and uh, next week, Friday, you need to submit your lab module, okay, for lab four. Okay, similar. So you need to submit to Pon Usna. Uh, and uh, you, you will have, okay, I already gave assignment, TA assignment yesterday night. Okay, so you have time until 27. So I gave three weeks. Okay, so yesterday I gave on six. Uh, so 13, 20, 27. You have three weeks to complete. Uh, and it's not uh, quite easy because you need to prepare a report and you need to prepare a presentation video, which you need to upload in YouTube. Okay, so no need to send in Google Classroom. I didn't have any place for you to upload. And it's uh, quite troublesome for me to view also. So better you give me the Google, uh, you upload in YouTube and give me the link. Uh, so it will save space because now Unimap don't have uh, unlimited uh, G Suite. Okay, so it's already limited, so we cannot like really keep the videos in our drive. So we need to delete. It's a better to upload in YouTube. Okay, so um, it's an individual assignment, so you need to prepare it into individually. It's not a group assignment. And the report also individual. Okay. Uh, and um, what else? I think that's all. Okay. Once we finish our all our lectures by next week, so I'll start uh, tutorials. Okay, tutorial for you to prepare for your open book exam. So like how I did last time. Okay, how you can uh, answer the question. So I I see. Because of the tutorial, I think you all know what's the expectation of the and, uh, of the panels, uh, and you able to answer. Not all of you; some still doing the same mistake. Uh, mostly uh, can can answer. Okay, so we will we will see on that on the tutorials. Some of the tutorials, and we as I say, we will have one talk. Okay, the panel is fixed. Uh, you will come from industry. So you will give a talk, and this talk you will have an assignment. Okay, based on the content, I will prepare some question and it contribute for five months. Okay, so it will be within uh, this few weeks. Uh, so I will try to prepare, prepare that uh, the talk. Uh, and I need to ask the panel for the time, proper time for to, for us to do the uh, meeting and the talk. Maybe one or one and a half hours. Uh, you will tell on uh, how pneumatic and hydraulics in the industry. Okay, so then we will have open book exam. Uh, then we will have one quiz for us to settle. So quiz as usual. Uh, it will be. like game okay but i think better i finish all the chapters first next week uh, then i will decide when i want to do the quiz okay so it just will be a 30 minutes quiz okay so i think uh, by doing that we will conclude this chapter this uh, subject so i hope you all got a good understanding of how pneumatic electro pneumatic and uh, hydraulics work okay so if no question I think uh, that's all from me. So we will see you next week. Okay, thank you.
Çok iyi. Çok teşekkürler.